hey guys so the problem that we'll be discussing today is from the recent starters 13 and the problem name is add and divide so the difficulty level of this problem is easy and its prerequisites are prime factorization let's have a look at the problem statement so you are given two positive integers a and b you also have a number x which is initially set to zero so we have been given x is equal to zero initially at first you can add a to x any number of times and after that you can divide x by b any number of times as long as x is divisible by b so first uh, we can add a to x any number of times and then we can divide x by b any number of times okay as long as x is divisible by b so finally what we have to do we have to print yes if you can make x equal to 1 or otherwise we have to print no so let's just see a small example so here uh, let's say we have been given a is equal to 9 and b is equal to 6 okay so uh, let us see how we can uh, make x equal to 1 so first x was equal to 0 right then we added a once so then x be became equal to 9 again we added a then x became equal to 18 right again we added a x became equal to 27 and again we have to add a therefore x became equal to 36 now what we will do is we will divide x by b so if we do x by b here x will be equal to 6 again if we do x by b then x will be equal to 1 therefore over here we can convert x to 1 and therefore the answer for this test case will be yes right now uh, we have seen a sample case now let us directly jump to the solution approach so let's discuss the solution approach so here let us see what we did in the sample case so in the sample case we had a is equal to 9 and b is equal to 6 so what we did was we kept adding a to x so we did x plus equal to a until until x was equal to b to the power n where n is some number right so b was 6 and until x became 36 which is 6 square we kept adding a to x so essentially what we have to do is we have to check if b to the power n is divisible by a right if b to the power n is divisible by a then obviously uh, if we keep adding a finite amount of a then we, we are going to reach b to the power n so what we have to do is we have to uh, check if b to the power n is divisible by a for some n greater than equal to 1 now obviously we can't try every value and check right so it's not feasible so what we have to do over here now let us see so uh, basically what we have to do is b into b into b so this is i'm just writing the representation of b to the power n divided by a okay so now let us see what is a so a is com uh, comprised of some prime factors right so let us write a in terms of prime factors so let us write it a1 into a2 into up to some number now watch carefully so if b to the power n should be divisible by a then b should be divisible by each of its prime factors right obviously uh, if we want this whole uh, like this whole equation to evaluate uh, to some uh, like integer therefore the denominator needs to become one right therefore we can say that b upon a1 into b upon a2 into b upon a3 so all this should uh, be a integer number therefore b should be divisible by each of its prime factors right so we have reached the conclusion that b should be divisible by all prime factors by all prime factors of a so if this is the case then obviously we are going to get the answer yes 
and if this is not the case that is if b is not divisible by all prime factors of a therefore we are never going to reach such a case where b or b raised to n is divisible by a for some n greater than or equal to 1 so for those cases the answer will be no so uh, looking at the pseudo code what we have to do is first the first step is calculate prime factors of a right so calculate prime factors of a this will be the first step and what will be the second step? The second step will be nothing but check if B modulo P, uh, let us say P is a prime factor of A. So B modulo P is equal to 0 for every P, right? So basically, uh, all prime factors should divide B. So B should be divisible by every prime factor of A and that's what we are exactly doing by this statement. So if this is true, then we will just we can just keep a boolean operation to check all of this is true. If yes, then print yes. Otherwise, print no. So this is our pseudo code. Uh, let us just uh, dry run uh, our example that uh, we had checked before, where a was equal to nine and b was equal to six. So the prime factors of a are just three. So what we are going to check? We are going to check if six is divisible by three. Yes, it is. Therefore our answer is yes and this was the answer that we got so this was easy now let us directly proceed to the implementation so starting off with the c++ implementation first year i've implemented a function vector int prime factors int n so in this function we are doing nothing but calculating each and every prime factor of uh, a right so here uh, we are just initializing a vector in p fact while n mod 2 equal to equal to 0 we will keep pushing 2 into the p fact now uh, this prime uh, this prime factors uh, we can also keep it as a set but i have used a vector so it really doesn't matter okay so while n mod 2 p fact push back 2 so now uh, our remaining number uh, remaining numbers they are odd so here what we are going to do is simple if for i equal to 3 i star i less than equal to n i plus equal to 2 so while n mod i equal to equal to 0 what we are going to do is we are simply going to uh, push back i in the prime factor vector and we are going to divide n by i so finally uh, we are going to be left with one number and if that number is greater than 2 we will directly push it into the prime factor vector because uh, we are not going to push less than or equal to 2 because 2 is already done over here right so yeah so this is done so this is the prime factors uh, function now in our main function what we are going to do is we are first going to calculate factors so this will be the factors of a now uh, we are going to initialize a boolean variable pos is equal to true now we are going to iterate over all factors of a and we are going to check if b is divisible by each of them so even if b is not divisible by one of them then pos will be equal to false so here we will just output if pos uh, so if pos is true we will uh, output yes and if pos is false then we will output no so this was the code and yeah i think it was a pretty straightforward one i hope you understood it and thank you